Hi all, welcome to another Chess24 Bands of Blitz. It's approaching 11.30. Uh, before we get into the games, let's have a look at an amazing voucher code you can use. Uh, so I'll just show you this voucher code. And the voucher code is King's Crusher. So if you go to chess24.com slash premium and use this voucher code, you get 15% off. So you can get to play the likes of Magnus Carlsen, other fantastic grandmasters but Magnus Carlsen is the current world champion so particularly him maybe and international masters celebrities and even bunnies like me you can have a go at crushing every Sunday at 11.30 okay so with that little intro let's go to the games page okay uh, so going to the challenges mind juice hi there Okay, so d4. Okay, I'll play the hypermodern knight f6, hypermodern king's engine defense. And that looks a bit passive, as if saying, uh, waiting for me to play e5. I'll play. It. Okay, I like the c5 square now. I can entrench a knight there, surely. a5 stops b4. I'm looking at liberating this bishop later. But um, for a moment, I can seal against b4 by playing a4 later, if needed. Maybe bishop d7, a4 is a classic King's Engine thing to do. I hope audio and visual is okay, by the way. Okay, let's clamp down on this b4. Uh, so this makes the queen side kind of more solid, I believe, if I don't have to worry about the queen side. Prophylaxis, as Nimzovich would say, kind of minimizing the counterplay before going on to the attack. Or art of war, put yourself beyond defeat before going on to the attack. So, anyway, it's kind of solid here, but maybe it needs bishop d7. Okay. Maybe white can set up a battery. So, the question is queen d1. Yeah, I'm going to be challenged here about this whole concept. <laughs> so what about this for a moment with the crazy idea I don't usually play like this I was going to play queen a8 to queen d1 but anyway that's not an issue I was going to play <laughs> I was going to play queen a8 um, all right what is going on here why is b2 being allowed oh because that pawn was just there for the taking okay uh, there's some tactic on this diagonal now there's a loose rook can I go for something, a tactic, or just the king side? Maybe the king side. Actually, I'm I'm giving my opponent b3 back. Uh, mm, yeah. Well, b2 it was a, it was a goner anyway. Okay, so no problem. Have b2 back. I still feel pretty solid on the queen side at the moment. Maybe knight g4 coming in, bishop e5. Queen h4. So bishop e5 or knight e5 going into that d3 square looks very good actually without having to sacrifice a piece just yet. Yes, knight d3 looks kind of tasty. As tasty goes, knight d3 that opens up this bishop as well. Hits the queen. There's a potential for knight takes and rook takes if he's not careful at the moment. The queen is the guardian of the position. I wonder if bishop takes, pawn takes. That knight's pinned. Can I use that? Hmm. Fascinating. Hmm. I'm not sure it's that significant. There is b2 here though. That's pawns now held by the knight. Hmm. Bishop takes. I think what it does is loosen d5. You know, maybe from that angle, just loosen d5 because I know queen g5 hits d5. I don't know if this is a bit of a silly plan. It's. I mean, there's a certain amount of logic to it, surely. 
Okay, I can take that and then go back into d3. Or I could just play queen takes d5 as mentioned. Queen takes. Got to be wary about bishop b3 on this diagonal. If I ever play f5, you know, one day bishop b3 could be dangerous. One day. I wonder, like knight. It it still feels pretty solid. Um. I think I'll go back over here, away from that diagonal. So, okay, I'll capture towards the centre. Right, there's a 97 resource. That pawn's hanging, that pawn's hanging. Maybe f5 for a moment, just hold here. There's a check, but maybe... King H7. Oh, these pawns look a bit dangerous, actually. So, do I need to get serious about any kingside attack? I can go for F4 with Rook A E8. F4 looks thematic. These pawns, yeah, they could be dangerous. They set a sort of timeline, uh, time deadline for the attack. Okay, that's pinning there. Um. Yes, it's not all roses. F4, so I'm unpinning for F4. If I get in um, F3. Okay, I'll take it here. There's a concrete target. F2, maybe E3. E3. F takes, Queen takes F1. If not, E2, actually. Okay, so this looks rather dangerous for my opponent, doesn't it? E2 or not. There is potential of bishop e5 as well if g3 queen takes, but unfortunately knight takes is there. What if I played rook e5 first, knight takes, bishop takes, threatening mate, g3 queen takes. I mean I'll go with this. Actually, I'm, I'm not really threatening uh, chatmates because, well, no, I, I mean, <laughs> I think there was takes. Anyway, all right. So here, um, rook g5 uh, builds some pressure. So I'm threatening, I'm not threatening queen takes. That pawn's dangerous now. Uh huh. Okay, that pawn's getting dangerous, and there's knight b8 on the cards. Let's just do this for a moment. Oh, blame me. This doesn't look well, this position. It doesn't look that well, and the time's getting short. I'm not trying to create drama, but <laughs> there's bishops on that rook. Oh, blame me. Am I in trouble? Am I getting in trouble here? There's, oh, looks as though all is not well here. I don't know about this move. All right. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I'm stuck. Oh, blimey. C4. I don't think this helps. All right, so he's on the rook. Can I take the pawn? No. I can play bishop d4 though. Maybe and then take the pawn. Is he giving up his queen maybe, but bishop takes, bishop takes. Yeah, if I took the pawn, queen takes, fine. I've I've disconnected f2 from a7. Hmm. I'm glad to take that off. Put this back. Right, so I think I'm back in the driving seat. I'll threaten the checkmate now. Yeah, that was getting scary. That was getting very 
Very scary. Well played. Branderson. Hi there. So that was quite actually a quite classic play from White using the Queen side past pawns. Oh, Brenderson. Okay, you're there. I'll play a I like the Austrian attack. That's squishy. Okay, I'll test the waters here. Uh huh. Little pawn sack. Try and liberate the pieces. A little pawn sack. I'm at a very castle queenside. Soon. Okay. E5 looks fun. I'm trying to sort of uh, get this rook going against the D file. Okay, that hole looks good, like G5. And uh, let's do something about that. Although B4 is nasty. Mm. All right, maybe I have to do that because B4 looks nasty. Maybe it's not. It's not plain sailing. This. Wonder if, yeah, is on the bishop here. G three. I've given a rather dangerous B file, haven't I? Maybe this is this is not great at the moment. Well, our knight takes uh, bishop c4, bishop b7, rook takes d5. Yeah, I think this diagonal of death might actually help me here. There's no bishop e6. If bishop b7, rook d5, bishop d5, bishop d5, bishop a8 after diagonal of death. Exploiting the defaults, because the default king's issue on g8, this diagonal. Let me say. Check out the diagonal of death tactics. All right, so he's played anyway. He's played knight c6. Okay, so if I take and then bishop c4. Now e6, queen, I'll get mated. What about c3 as a safety? Just in case I'm tempted to play that way soon. Um. Okay, that sort of blunts that bishop in advance of any e6. Okay, king c2 here for rook a1. And queen a4, bishop b3. I just want to play rook a1 to get a bit more coziness going around my king. Rook a1 looks like something. Yeah, queen a4, bishop b3, I hope. There's no queen f4 just yet. Can I get another tempo? There's rook d6, but that drops the rook. Okay, there's no c4 just yet, so if I move that. Okay, so rook d6 now. I think rook g6 for queen h. This undermines the pawn chain tactically. Queen h5, queen h7. I think that undermines the pawn chain in a tactical manner. Yeah, I think that looks good with the knight on uh, g5. Emerging tactical idea. He can defend with queen now. Uh, okay, it's not terminal. It's not terminal just yet. Mm, is queen g6 better? Um. Mm. 
Where's his tennis? Oh, the knights. No, no, no. He had King G8. No, no. The knights on the knights on 87. <laughs> okay, thanks, Brandon's Ben. Okay. Ah, uh, Olaf. Hi there. Let's play. Uh, uh, I don't know actually. Let's let's sense the move timing of Olaf's first move. I'm going to try and do Alaska. And when I say I'm trying to do Alaska, I'm going to try and absorb the entire context of the game, everything I know about the game, timings, everything, to try and create a win probability. I think this is what Alaska is about. This is my current pet theory. I think he's absorbing. It's, he's not like he's not necessarily a psychologist. I think he's just absorbing the context, the broader context of things, not just the opponent, but other things. Uh, but I, I think he himself was a victim of context when he lost to Capablanca. Uh, I saw this excellent video on Lasker during the week. By the way, it's on YouTube. It's about t uh, Mark Anderson. It's about two hours long. He lost to Capablanca in terrible conditions. He didn't want to play there. It was like some casino. And it was really, really high temperatures in Cuba or something. So I don't know. He didn't really. He really begged to not play there. So he he himself became a victim, I think, of literal context. But I think I think he's been completely underestimated on YouTube because I think he's got this rep as being some master psychologist or something. But I, I think it's just for me. I think it's it's, it's win probability. Okay, so F four, knight F six, G five, G four. I mean, I think also something Topolov once said: "There's no such thing as the best move. It it really depends on the opponent." Blah 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 blah. The torment situation. And that's the move you play. I think so. Maybe Topolov is is related, you know, in a way to you know Lasker's thoughts on the game. Then chess is a fight. If you take account the whole context of the game and not just try and play like a robot, that's interesting. But is it ethical in some way? Is it naughty to sort of factor in who you're actually playing or not? Okay, so here takes e5 is is nasty. I don't want to liberate that bishop. That's not exact, that's the reverse of prophylaxis. Liberating that bishop. I think I want to take on h3. Yeah, get my g file attack working. I'll keep this closed in. I missed that. Um. Okay, so queen h5 coming up. Stop that rook g8. And uh, bishop g4 or knight g4. Okay, so knight g4 or rook g8 or ef. No, ef, it, I mean, keeps liberating the bishop. Rook g8, fe, queen e5. I want, I want this h file, I think. Um, maybe bishop h6 coming up. Okay, he's gonna, no, that just drops the knight. I have unpinned. Bishop g4 here for knight g4, there's hg after. If I take my opportunity to snap this pawn off, try and weaken that G file. It means knight G4. There's no lurking H3 after if I clear that pawn away. Okay, uh, this is getting a bit scary. Can I attack that bishop with bishop H8? Does that do anything? I can't get this rook in the game. What's wrong with A B anyway for rook A one? What's wrong with A B when I look on this side of the board? I'm I'm too concerned. Of, oh, he's blundered his bishop. He's concerned, of it and I'm concerned. I'm I'm missing things over here. He just missed rook G five. Is it's it's he's he's not he's looking at my move and not not the effect. <laughs> yeah, you you got to look at the effect, not the move. If you look at the move. It's it's like I I haven't done anything. It's the effect. It's liberating the bishop. It's the effect. I this this guy um, on this workplace once every sentence right. He used to say in effect. He's like really really bright guy though from Imperial College, and he was putting me off. But he had this manner of saying in effect, and I was wondering 
what on earth is this about yeah how comes he hasn't been called up on this but i think in chess when you play a move you have to look around the entire position the entire effect of the move don't just look at the move um i mean that is not there's no in effect there because i've just moved the bishop there's nothing but if you move a pawn it's like you might have opened up a bishop in particular pawns in particular the construct that in effect phrase i think is 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 potent for certain types of you know uncovering moves when you uncover pieces that idea of looking in effect at what you're doing the whole the whole picture the whole picture so uh okay so bishop g4 so a6 and b5 a6 let's go for this b5 what's that doing there is it, is it something to do with knight c5 is there something nasty going on here am i am i missing it okay knight d4 here trying to exploit that pin the bishop's kind of awkward surely for that pin maybe bishop f4 if knight d4 bishop e3 here's c6 looks okay f knight f6 queen f6 knight d4 there's queen d4 Oh, e5 could be a pain okay maybe queen f4 here if uh no 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 I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> what am i doing what am i doing here let's just be careful here okay there's e5 on the cards if i play bishop takes now and queen e5 i need to gain a tempo i think if uh, rook f5 oh no hang on he's got bishop f7 all right it's no big deal i think king e7 and he queen h4 g5 i think i can share that f file okay he can have that pawn it's not such a big deal it wasn't something i'd planned for but i don't think it matters that much i hope if i can use this f file it's a semi open file so rook f8 rook f3 there's g5 there i hope in there I want to get on with rook f8 without too much hassle right is there is there any, any good ideas here is rook h7 for queen h2 bishop h2 I can just get the the endings so rook f5 queen h2 try and pick off this bishop as a tactical liability so rook f5 queen h2 queen h2 bishop h2 just take on this uh f7 with the help of my king how is this ending it's not lost is it i got a two to one over here uh is it lost this is a bit dodgy isn't it I could have stopped the king, I think, if I'm using g4 is a bit crucial. Because otherwise this could be very, very easily lost. Now, I don't want that fixing. I think a5 is important. Or b6. B6 flexibility. I would still have c5, c4 after. I don't want any a5 fixing. Because otherwise there's no c5, c4. If my king's pressing on e4, I want c5, c4 with the possibility of c3 maybe. So I think I want a position where the two to one, okay, he's giving me squares for the king here if he plays c takes. If he plays c4, that's fine. I don't think he can easily get to the d4 pawn. As long as I don't play this, I think c5 looks plausible. Just check any e5, king, e6. Okay, I think it's plausible. Is he getting to the e5 pawn? King e6. As long as I get to the e5 square. Alright, this is the dream destination. And now, trying to generate a past pawn. 
or not, as the case might be. Did I just miss a shot to play B5? I can play King F6, and then G4, and then King G5, then H4. I think there is a pass pawn there. Oh, this is going to be curious. I'm not exactly sure. Although it seems it might be favourable. King G5, H4 might be favourable. Because I, I think his pawn's not. I'm going to check this. E5, King G5. Goes over there. H4 takes, queen, king takes, e5, king g5, e6, king f6, king takes g4, king takes e6, king d6. I'm going to play for b5 over here. Oh, okay, this is probably losing. I think he has to play e5. I get tempo here. Triangle. I want that position with triangle. King G3. There's two pass pawns here. How do I get the situation where there's two pass pawns and he doesn't queen? Do I play it here? King e6. There's a pass pawn there and there. This can be wait for that. Do I have chance for c4? b6, king e7, b7, he queens. So I go here, King G3, C4. Oh, I think you can play B3, I just realised. This isn't clever. This isn't clever about to lose this spectacularly. You know what? I, I <laughs> This isn't clever. I, I just realised. Oh, no, this isn't clever. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, is he in time for all of these pawns? Tell me he's not in time for all of these pawns. I was, I was banking on, I think B3 was just winning. The king's not Superman, right? Can't go from there to there. I think B3 might have been winning. I think I took a risk, huge risk there. Yes, I think it's over. But let's have a look. I think B, I suspect B3 was just putting the end to my fun there with past pawns. It should be equal. I just had this glimmer that I could have a past pawn there and there, and the king's. That was the winning attempt. All right, I thought B3. Yeah, B3 is plus 59. Oh, just B3. Just B3. Stops any past pawn dream. Or B6. Because actually the same is for these guys. I can't go with this because of that. There's the same weighting responsibility with these two as there is with these two. So in fact, B6. Okay, it's a bit instructive. 
because I can't go for that without that and the other one, yeah? The same applies to me. It's it's the laws of gravity apply to both players here. Uh, but yeah, be, be free. Yeah. How is this equal? I thought I was okay here. Is it still B6 is equal now because of this other pawn? Well, this is a fascinating line. Well, the engine thinks it's going to be uh, equal here. Okay. <laughs> Beware of past pawns in the end game. They're, they're the name of the game quite often. Those past pawns and the dynamic possibilities. Okay, this is Bob Beams. Definitely, I've had a chat with him. It's Bob Beams. It's a Fide Master here. He hasn't got the Fide Master thing, but he's a Fide Master. So he's a champion player, really attacking player. Um, he's won the South End Open a few times. Played in the British Championship multiple times. Hi. <laughs> uh, Please feel free to go for a coffee break during the game if you want to lose on time. When you're in a winning position, feel 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 free to go and make a coffee. <laughs> okay, no, that's okay. Go easy on me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, he's going for a classic C3, D4. If I do this, try and get the F5 square, switch it positionally a little bit, in inverted commas, for this F5 square. Oh, it's a knight H4 coming up. He can double my pawns, he can torch me on the C file. It might be worth playing knight B8. <laughs> Just to avoid all this, just knight B8. <laughs> Sorry about this, but I can't see that knight e7 helps because of g4. I'm in interrupting, in effect, uh, in effect, I'm interrupting the queen. So I think I'm just going to do this. I know I'm crazy, but, you know, c6, c6, yeah, without any double pawns. Nimzovich would be proud. No double pawns, yeah? <clears throat> I'm sure it will give him a laugh, this move. Okay, he's going to checkmate my queen now with this crisscross. I'm under tactical pressure on d5. Oh, in fact, d5 is dropping. Oh, my God. Because of rookie a. Uh, it was a bad idea in retrospect. It was a very bad idea. There's 95 down. Oh, God. This is going to be a nightmare. I'm being mashed. Ah. Knight b8 was too cheeky. So looking at 95, queen f7, bishop c4. And things like knight b6 after, that's nice. Anything else I can do to avert any disasters? Instead of lining up on this diagonal, could I play queen d6 just for a laugh? Hmm. Great. Grovel. Away from the, the light square bishop. Maybe, maybe, yeah. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I don't, I don't want a rookie seven with, with tempo. If there's a G4 in rookie seven, I don't want the king really with tempo. If I can get knight c6 in, is there some pressure on? D four. It was B five. Bishop B three. Bishop D seven. Maybe for Rook A E eight. I can get ready for a trap with A five. So B five. Bishop B three. A four. Trying to win this knight. Tactically with A five. B five. A4. 
A5 cheeky move. F knight e5, maybe knight takes d4 is plausible. I'll play this anyway. I'm trying to think a4. Well, the bishop's kind of mm, obscured. All right, so this rookie eight, if I take off and then play knight takes d4, is that not something? Probably not. G five if it takes ninety four. G five is crazy. H three just ignores it. Knight D eight. That might be Queen E five. Win some last move. Let's see what does this do again? It plays Queen D three or something, does he? At least I take him off E five. Maybe we can go back to G seven. Just let him take off a pair of rooks. And hope for the best. Knight A five here is a tempo gainer. And then knight B three. Why is he allowing that? If Queen C seven or oh, Queen C seven. Well, there's, maybe there's b5 here for knight d4. This is getting a bit silly, isn't it? So queen b5, knight d4, hitting the queen. But another point is, well, there's knight d4 here if queen takes knight f3. Knight d4, queen d6, knight f3. I might be back in business. What is he doing? I hope I'm. I hope I'm back in business. Uh, no, maybe not. Actually, no. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Rookie seven. Let's try and contest the. E four. Doesn't seem that bad. Mm. Let's try and protect one of the pawns. He's got double pawns. Maybe there's some. I hope the draw a chance. Is Rook C two coming up? Would he accept a draw? <laughs> I don't know if he... No! <laughs> okay. Oh, thanks, Bob. <laughs> oh, out to crush me. Okay, okay. <laughs> I gave you a chance to draw. I'm going to have to win on time now, Bob. <laughs> I'm sure he's not as good at pre-moving. I've mastered the art of... Okay. Ah, oh, I'm going to lose another pawn. Hang on. I'm going to lose all these pawns now after that. Because I'm away from F5. But he's got to speed up, man. He's got to speed up. 
Come on. He's got to speed up. Twenty four. I'm ten seconds ahead. I think Bob is not so so time focused. He's a perfectionist. He's got to start pre moving. Come on. I've got this past pawn. I'm not. I'm not so worried now. I've got a past pawn, winning trump card here potentially. I. I don't feel so dirty. <laughs> it's. It, it's. It, it is a past pawn. It's a, an active king. I'm threatening, mate. I don't know. <sighs> Thanks, Bob. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Uh. Okay, so knight f3 coming over here. What's this? What's this? No, no. Does this really work here? Yeah. I suppose it does. I suppose it does. Does it? Mm, maybe I have been tricked into a bad opening. I'll try and shred this king though. Uh huh. And I'll try and shred this king with. Stuff. Okay, I'm protecting f4. It means also, you know, maybe queen d3. Black has that bishop. I think that was an interesting transaction there. From Black. Very interesting transaction. Do I want the queens off? I, uh, I'm not really, I'm not really sure what I'm doing now. I'm not really sure. Okay, I I think oh, there's always Bishop G four as well. This is unpleasant. I mean, it's official. I get the queens off here and just take here and then just castle. And what is this position? Is then as a knight f seven for as bishop d four. What about c three? Setting up knight f seven. Also blunting the bishop anyway. Okay, uh, maybe bishop f four. Trying to get access to f six. Bishop f four. Okay. Um This knight g3 here, take out the bishop pair. The bishop pair is quite complementary, quite usually. So, well, oh, there's knight f6 there. I was expecting rook e5 and then knight g3. Possibly, I'm um, not rookie too. I think 
because of knight f3 check winning the rook but i'm wondering about rook e3 instead i think knight f3 i can just take with either rook if i want to double on the e file i think the safer route is rook e3 you see i'm being a super nerd even about doubling i think that's the key to chess be very very careful about the details rook e2 to double i think fells knight f3 now hang on does it there's actually king f2 but then it's not ideal you could take maybe take one g5 maybe that's okay oh or is it hang on there's knight h4 no i i think some intention to detail rook e3 to double not rook e2 All right, so, okay. This is a long think, isn't it? Oh. So I was thinking of covering another Alaska game today. It's actually quite incredible. I put his games through computers and he's super accurate. Okay, Rook E3 here. He's super duper accurate, Alaska. He was the longest reigning world champion, largely ignored on YouTube. And I think there's a number of reasons behind that, which are interesting, I think, in their own right. There's rookie five here, isn't there, for knight f7, the forcing move. Check all the candidate forcing moves. And I think you'll come up with rookie five here for knight f7. I think I think Laska got a bad rep as a deep psychologist, as if that's kind of. But I think he's. I think it's more about win probability. I like to think of it as win probability, based on context. So if he's playing Frank Marshall, he's basically saying win probability wise, Frank Marshall's great at the middle game. Why not go to end games? And I think you know he won his match going to end games on that. So I think it, you can bring it down to win probability, not sort of an attack on the opponents. Uh, particular style um okay so anyway Teja hi there okay okay so Teja So knight f3, bishop e3, and maybe bishop c4 coming up. All right, I think there's an h3 here. I think I might have seen something like this in the not too dim distant past. Although, okay, is d5 safe enough? Knight b4. Rook c1, if knight e5, knight d4. I'm hoping this is something I can play, d5, because actually, if I can play it, I think I relish the idea of knight d4 and f4 squishing with f5. So say knight e5, knight d4, I think I've got f4, f5 coming up. So this possibility, I mean, there's knight d4 here, but then d5 drops. And one of rook c1, I suppose d5 is weak. What about just bishop c4 then? There's knight c2. Okay, so I think I have to, maybe I've, I've caused some hassle for myself. What about bishop c4 here then? Or in fact... You know, this is interesting because queen d4, knight c2, rook c2, bishop c2. The point is queen a7 looks dangerous. And if knight d5, knight d5, queen d5, queen a7 again, as long as I'm not getting mated on d file. Queen d4, oh, c5 runs into c5 maybe. So what is wrong with bishop c4? Do I have an insertion of e6 maybe i just do it now i'm just going to do it now 
I'm thinking, you know, Queen A7 in this diagonal looks a bit dangerous. So you playing just Queen B6, Queen A8, King D7. There's Knight E5 there, King A. Okay, it it's interesting this exchange sack, isn't it? Maybe it's not. <sighs> Knight c2, rook c2, bishop c2, queen a7. What is the concrete threat? Queen a8, king d7. Don't know if there's a real concrete threat just yet. Maybe it makes it worse with queen b6. Queen a8, king d7, knight e5, king e8. His bishop's on c2 there. Can you do that? Yeah, his king's protecting the rook on d8. My knight's not doing that much. Can I improve on anything? On. Oh. Well, here there's. Bishop f4. I can double his pawns, I think. Can I? Because Queen C five, unless he wants to drop B four. If I just take on C five and then that's interesting. Uh there's other sacrificial ideas emerging after A three, knight C two, rook C two, bishop C two, bishop A six, uh if King B eight, knight E five looks dangerous for knight C six maybe. I think there's compensation there anyway. Just second the exchange there. Do I really test that or not? Or King D one. The thing is he's gonna play E six and and then A three knight D five. So do I play this exchange sack here? Or try and improve it first with knight E five? I think knight E five. So rook c2, there's, I covered d7, there's knight c6 immediately winning a rook. Sometimes in going back to f7 to win the other rook. So in other words, knight c2, rook c2, bishop c2, bishop a6, king b8, knight c6, king a8, knight takes d8. Does he go back with a bishop to g6? Well, it's crunch time. Does he want to play knight c2? <laughs> no. Actually, there's also king d2. I don't even need to sack the exchange. Maybe there's even king d2. Uh, so knight d4, bishop a6 is simply winning, isn't that? Or not? All right, king d2 here or bishop g2. Bishop g2 looks nice. For d6 sometimes. Maybe King D two in that scenario. Knight C two, King D two, Knight D four. Well, actually, there's another scenario here. There's a weakness of the last move. I just take Knight F seven, forking the rooks. This looks like a very pleasant position now. Yeah, given I've just spotted that as well. Now there's Knight F seven, essentially. If I just take, and then there's knight f7. Hmm. I can throw in winning a pawn with d6, can I? Or is there c6? It's not worth it. C6. Alright, I'll take this guy. Or that guy. Hang on. Take this guy. 
because actually there's 96 from that bush is sort of closed then. Right, the bishop hasn't got any squares. So king d2. This one hasn't got any squares either. In fact, I'm winning this bishop in broad daylight. That bishop hasn't got any squares, and this one hasn't. That's funny. I don't see anything. Yeah, I think that's that's problematic that position. That's very problematic. Okay. Okay, real free loss. A three minute game. Are you guys getting in training for Megan's Carlson? I think he's free. He has a free minute. <laughs> Good for training for the Megan's Carlson's dreams. I think uh, Magnus plays it with the free minute as a preference. And fourth. Uh, okay, so knight d7. A5, b6, knight c5. Is that an idea? I mean. It springs to mind as a classic King's Indian idea. This one as well, if I want to blunt things over here. <clears throat> Keep the age file closed, essentially. With Oh hang on, there is a possibility of trapping the Queen with Bishop takes and shutting down the Queen with G five. It's a very naughty idea. It's like in a James Bond film, the evil villains sort of encroaching a spaceship. Uh, so the bishop takes and then g5. Okay, <laughs> it's naughty. It's too naughty to pass off. There might be no. <laughs> it's too naughty to pass off. Oh boy. I think I'm only two. I'm only two moves away from trapping that queen. You know, king h8 and knight g8. But he's being violent now to get the queen out. Okay, the end of that fun then. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> uh, okay. So h6 threatens mate. There's rook g8 though, isn't it? And there's no queen f6. So I think rook g. First, because knight f6, h6, and I can't play this because of queen f6. So I think rook g8 probably first. Little nuance there. Okay, so that form pawn is not going to be a killer just yet. Do I want the knight on f6 or c5? I, I kind of like it on c5. I don't know. I don't know. I can't make up. I can't. I can't do that analysis. I would imagine, you know, g4, g5 anyway is going to kick that knight. Can I just try and get some counterplay of my own? Or maybe even just get the queens off here with queen f4. Okay, he's got past pawns, but if the queens come off, my the probability of me getting mated is much reduced. So queen f4, just getting the queens off. Should I just do that and get the queens off? Okay, the past pawns are pretty dangerous looking. Hmm. He can round up this pawn as well. Can he? Maybe he can. Can he? Because the thing is, uh, rook h4, I mean f3, and then knight d3 and knight f2. Might be something to say about that. Or not. 
maybe not. I think I'd rather just give him the pawn actually and play rook f8. Contest this f file, get some f file pressure. I think it looks more stable than having unprotected pieces. So he's threatening g7 just then. Nice to blockade with the king. So I'm threatening rook f2 now. If rook h1, maybe knight g6, extinguishing. I think there is knight g6 there on bishop h5, bishop e8. That should be su sufficient, right? Now there's knight d3 to f4. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. That's a it's a mechanism worth knowing about this kind of like trapping the uh, queen. Okay. Against that sort of h file attack. Hmm. <clears throat> I don't know exactly the uh, theory here. Is bishop e6 a move or bishop e7? I don't know. I'm hoping I've, this rings a bell, bishop b 7 and castling. Well, that maybe c5 is also interesting, but c5, bishop e4. Maybe I need to rest that and then try and play c5 and then castle. It rings a bell, but you know, just vaguely. Hmm. If I castle, then I can play. C five with the bishop protected. He's got bishop e four, has he? I might be threatening queen e five here. I think it would be nice to have a G road with F six and take takes and G road. Especially with the bishop, you know, the rook, you can imagine G two being being something. On bishop F four, G five and H five spring to mind. Is g5 here really super terrible? Because there's bishop g7, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, man. G5 looks very dodgy. d5 looks d6. Bishop f4. d takes, doesn't look right. I think... Okay. <laughs> oh... I, I'm going to regret this. This doesn't look right. I know it doesn't look right. Oh, God. How much pain am I in for now? I'm just thinking crudely. D6, there's no bishop f4, right? Because there's a pin there. These pieces are asleep at the moment. Maybe there's bishop g7 and d6. But I'm not convinced because I'm, lo I'm loosening. Light squares... Okay, and dark squares. Okay, let's protect that for a moment. Bishop g7. Okay. Okay, do I need to stop that? Probably because otherwise the knight's going to be wretched forever. But a4, there's, I mean, a5, there's b4. Maybe the knight is condemned. 
already. So let me just see fine for a moment. I'm just getting ready for knight a8 and rerouting later maybe to c7 to e6. But he's always got he's always got bishop e4 now. <clears throat> bishop g7. Threatens maybe f6 in some way. In inverted commas. I don't know if that's really a useful threat to win that pawn. Um right, it's shredding my king safety here. That's very nice. F C six A six, that's nice. Wow, okay. So my king is being shredded at the moment. Very nice. Okay. I'm gonna hope this is not losing immediately. If I take and then C six Maybe the knight can crawl back now to B six. Probably for knight A four to be able to just take that as a luxury. And that's a weakness and that D five is possible as taking then the diagonal. Is D five useful though? I mean maybe it's useful, maybe it isn't. D six, bishop A three. I can play D six. Maybe that's more to the point. On Bishop A three, Bishop E five. No, D six no no no. D six he just plays Queen C six. What about D five? Back to the drawing board. D five C D C D. Okay, D five looks crazy, but maybe. So E D Queen E four and the diagonal. I'm shielding C six for a moment. Okay, I don't mind the queens coming off. That's the last of my <laughs> worries. The queens coming off is the last of my worries. I I have avoided a, a stranded knight on a8. That's that's good. I've avoided my king being mated. So, yeah, the queens coming off. Not so bothered about that. Okay, I can undouble the pawns, which is good in principle. However, in practice. It's worth maybe making a note of the frontal pressure, subtle upside of E D. But you know, E D. Uh, I think Bishop E three. Let's just undouble the pawns. All right. So this guy. Well, there's actually there's rook d6 here huh? for bishop takes. Okay, I can uh, protect. I think the issues have gone, disappeared. Um, I can't complain. All right, 
thanks, Pomo. Yeah, that, I didn't know what I was doing in the opening. Is it, you need to know a lot of STEM games, I think, generally, <laughs> to play an opening. I don't. I've completely forgotten all of them, really. Uh, okay. Apart from that, yeah. Don Williams? Okay. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. Hold on. Okay. Maybe Karakon today. That's Don Karakon. I'm going to try this line which I've had difficulty with white against with E takes. Okay. I thought he was going to give me the double pawns, but maybe he's, he's playing it sort of in a way that I should have considered playing it just a casual bishop d3 rather than doubling black's pawns. I have to make note of Don's uh, repertoire here. Um, I don't want to blunt this bush. I think G6 looks as though it might be okay. Yeah, the you know the EF capture. I've been thinking that's quite dangerous. Hmm. I go for. C five here. Yeah. The the sense is too solid. It needs to be undermined. C five. In doing so I'd be liberating the bishop anyway. C five. Take right with the knight, right, right, right. So I've got a pawn in the center here. Do I dare play um, e4? Just play rookie eight. Wait for the rook to go to e1 away from f2 which means anything like e4 and knight g4 later but the knight's interrupting that diagonal it seems mostly pointless i could play e4 straight away as knight g5 all right i'll play rookie eight all right so bishop g4 here actually looks interesting I think Bishop takes f3 actually. Okay, that's mild, isn't it? I'm just going here. Okay, he's not really going to play g4, that would be ridiculous. He's creating weaknesses around his king. I can probably play bishop e4 on knight f3. If knight d2, bishop c6, that looks good. Bishop c6, eyeing g2. Can I do better with e4 here? On g4, h6? I don't know if things get a bit crazy there. I can stop knight f3. That looks very tempting. I'm gonna do it. I thought he was gonna play knight f3 while he had a chance. Okay, he can play g4 here, h6, knight f7. I take, take, uh, if I'm gonna exchange down, but his king's wrecked, I've got a g file. Imagine this position exchanged down, but this rook's asleep. I've got a g file there. I've also got carnage on the diagonal, probably. If, if this is compromised, that diagonal. So what I'm saying is g4, h6, knight f7, rook f7, bishop f7, king takes, g takes, g takes, with rook g8, say king h1, queen c6, threatening e3, as an example. That looks like good compensation for the exchange. If he's forced to play g4 here, it looks like that I've got good attacking basis there, I think. 
g4 h6 knight f7 rook f7 bishop f7 king takes g takes g takes let's say queen h6 rook g8 check well here if king f1 actually there's even this diagonal here there's a diagonal there as well queen b5 queen a6 all right I protect this guy or do I do I play h6 immediately he's gonna have this um tactic and then g4 later I don't think no knight f7 threatens queen h6 there's no time for anything cheeky like knight h5 so this is a different version of events I'm going to do this because it just looks as though it should be done it's centralizing okay I don't know I don't know okay so h6 There's e3 here for e takes f2. That's a new resource in the possession. e3. That's not something I'd spotted before. For e takes and rook e1. That's a perk of doubling the rooks. Because a queen f2, rook e1, winning material. This could change the picture of things because it will celebrate the bishop. So I'm threatening a nasty discovered check on the queen. Rook f3. There's rook g3 here. King of one, bishop d3. King e1, rook g1 is winning. If my calculation's right. Rook g3, king f1, bishop d3, king e1. Rook g1. task with e3 so doubling the rooks looked intuitive I didn't really know about e3 maybe sometimes it's good to create those batteries though they give you the common squares those batteries are dangerous maybe find out what they do later but set them up set up the batteries find out what they do later okay nine nine juice hi there so I think this is a trap I've mentioned before a sort of positional trap and I have checked it recently with Stockfish 11 as part of a, a Cora answer I was doing I was um, I think there's a line where okay it's been bypassed anyway so knight takes and then d3 or bishop c4 d4 looks Bishop e3 but it's also it's also mentioned in um, uh, chess explains um, simple repertoire uh, at chess ball I think uh, so Bishop e2 it looks uh, looks okay Bishop e2 here okay this Bishop looks a bit blunted I could take that this pawn structure a bit of a wreck if I take that and then play c3 but on the other hand there's c5 maybe, maybe I just just castle here This c5 is um, 
Okay, I'm, I'm going to allow it. I'm going to allow it. I don't, I don't. I'm not sure. I believe it. It's, okay, it undoubles the pawns, but do I believe it? Maybe Bishop E3. Just, just let my opponent. Okay, C5 is ruled out now. I thought we had to do C5. I'm going to crush C5 out of existence with B4. Okay, this bishop is not happy, surely, in this pawn chain. It can't reroute on this diagonal, which is something I'll try and do if I had a bishop there. Okay, but it can't at the moment because of the double pawns. Okay, there's dynamic stuff. I'll get out of that. Queen C1. Try and switch that off. Queen C1 unpin basically. Maybe Bishop G5 causing F6. It's a few weaknesses to play with. Oh, there's E3 on the card. Take my rook. No, I don't want that. That's that's not that's not clever. That's not clever at all. Mind you, I'm putting the rook here. Hold on. And there's queen e3 blockading. Let's put a stop to that little pawn. Okay, Queen A two. Do I extinguish that just in case? B two. Any F four move? F three is Queen E five. I've just noticed. But F four there wouldn't be. But F three there might be. Bishop still making its presence felt in the variations. Bishop G four here. Hmm. Okay. Um here for a moment I just want to see what he's doing. I'm putting some pressure on the position. I don't have to play C takes, I can play Queen takes. Thanks, my juice. Okay. Jonathan, that's Bannon. Okay. Hi there. It's a three minute game. It's been four. I'll try Bishop D3 in my pet line. I've sometimes ruled this out. It's not very good. There is there is one point to it, a trappy point. <laughs> D, I think that's a trappy point. Anyway, actually I haven't really checked. D five, E five, ninety seven, E six. It did happen in one of my Blitz games once. <laughs> it's not a great advert for it at all, it really is. <laughs> I you know, this 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 line is really annoying. When you play the Smith Aura and this line happens, it's really kind of annoying. Ah, oh, okay. Anyway, it's a three-minute game. Bishop h4 to g3. Overprotect e5 here. 
All right. I want to play uh, something like a three, b four, queen d three. If I get a chance, and maybe there's d three and things are getting tactical. But knight c five, d takes, queen takes. I'm holding the knight. I'm hoping this is possible. So d three, knight takes, d takes, queen takes. Holding the knight. I hope. It's been tested. Okay, I might be losing the exchange. Oh well. You can take it on knight d3. Oh, this is worse. Okay. Alright, it's only a three minute game. No big deal, I hope. So h4 and knight g5 going on the attack is needed. Am I just safe card these pawns or not? Well, it sets a trap, queen e4 sometimes. Not here because he's on. I don't know, the bishop's holding f2. I mean, just knight f6 here. Looks dangerous for that form pawn. So I'm immediately threatening queen g4, queen g7. All right, so queen e4. For a moment. There is bishop e5 if I need it to gain a tempo. And protect f6. I just want to play queen f4. That's not right, is it? King H3 for G4. Yeah, it's, it's all dangerous from that form pawn. Working around, but I think technically black was winning. But it just just felt in context, the win probability was in my favour there. I thought it was too dangerous tactically. Um, but I did have to parry the threat of mate myself. That was getting a bit tricky. A bit lucky there. <laughs> um. This might be the last game, Cobra. Um, okay.
So c6, rookie 8, bishop f8 looks good. E5 um, not takes because, oh, maybe, maybe I can take. I'll, there's no discovered attack on my queen just yet. Um, queen C7, casting queenside is a bit peculiar to volunteer casting queenside. It's it's a greater area of uh, responsibility, you know, sometimes. I mean, maybe queen A5, and then B5. Hmm. Uh, I I don't know. <laughs> I'm wondering if this is a tempo gaining target to knight c4 or knight b3, or am I? Is it enough of a nuisance to do this? Is it enough of a nuisance? If knight c4, maybe I take, and then knight takes e4 comes after that. Do I at least create some weaknesses like? B three. Right, there's Queen A four here, kind of pinning down. No, there's Knight C one. There's Knight C one protects A two and hits my Queen. Right. So I think maybe B five a plan like ninety five to C four open the B five I think that's a plan so B five and ninety five to C four we'll try and open the B five get the rooks in it doesn't matter about losing the light square bishop maybe and this is a knight D four coming up hold on a sec this is all a bit dodgy because of knight D four if I play C five first in fact change the plan C five actually threatens C four isn't that annoying. Okay, I don't know. I have no idea. I'm going to try this. It sort of addresses knight d4. Is, is rook e6 here good for pressure on e4? g5, the knight takes e4. There's f3 and there's c4. I'm actually hitting e4 and threatening c4. F three C four. Knight D four. I'll take takes take the knight. Alright, so I take the queen off from rookie A or not. Or Queen C six. There's Queen dropping back. Maybe B five to stop the use of C four. Which would give me C four myself. Is that mostly pointless? Because I'm giving up d4 by playing c4. What about just a5? <laughs> and then if c4, then I'll have b4 one day after. If g5, knight h5. Okay, here we go. If h5, knight e5. All right, this knight h5 is it just horrible after f4? f4 knight g3, and I'm hitting e4. Not that hard. Rook g1 is not doing anything there. So knight d7 it is then. Okay, I'm getting overrun by these pawns. Back I go. I want to keep things closed. So in that regard, h6, even if the king's inconvenient, I think it overall keeps things more closed. <clears throat> I 
I mean, there's a, a use of e4 here. There's also bishop g6. I think d5 gives me access to closing up e4 and g6. I'll do that. Okay, I have to panic. Okay, I have to take that before everything gets the disaster. So state. Knight C4 here. I don't like the look of F6. I went out to blockade. If bishop F3, knight F6. Oh, that that bishop was hanging, wasn't that? Maybe, no, when you had bishop D5 anyway, winning the queen. So there's queen G6 and there's pressure on D5. Can I just go back for a moment? Oh, there's bishop H6. What about knight E4 then? Yeah. Trying to guard against G6. Right, so queen F6 here, I think. Looks right because there's a pin potential coming up. And this looks like good fun. Did I just lose a rook? Oh, I might have just lost the rook. Hold on. Maybe there's maybe there's rookie eight. Let's check here. Um, right. Oh, that's all pretty nasty. Pre-move time. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, <laughs> I feel a bit knackered, actually. I, I had it off for any of the tactics. I ended up, my calculation system was shutting down towards the end of this. And it wasn't the sort of game, it was not the ideal game when you feel yourself shutting down tactically. It's not the ideal game to have <laughs> at the end of a session. I just want to say that. Because there's, there's pressure points here on F, on D5, on G6. I thought I was just losing a rook. Actually, I just imagined I was just losing a rook here. I think I've been let off. I think it just takes on d8. I didn't just imagine that. Because f1 is covered. That's just, yeah. I've been let back in the game somehow, as if by magic. And I've been let back in the game here because this is check. And here I miss a better move. Why is that better? Rook f6, d4. No idea. It's not coming up. King g8. King g8. I'll take the queens off. So yeah, I think there was an opportunity for bishop takes d8. I'm back in the game here. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> All right. I hope you enjoyed the session. Yeah, one fun, ten boring. If you want to vote, um, 
Oh yeah, a bit lucky there in multiple games as usual. So keep up the challenges, yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> Cheers then. Thanks very much.